The neighbors flocked to the car, police car and the ambulance parked outside of the Borowskis, but received quite a shock when they heard that they weren't there for something that May did. May had sounded to sleep when the sirens were clattered around outside her window. She jolted awake and began fumbling for her laptop. Something in her dreams was convincing her that that noise was coming from her computer and she had to put a stop to it. It took her at least a few moments to notice the flashes of red and blue glittering through the window. Ugh, the cops, she mumbled, pondering down on the steps on her pajamas, a shirt that has been turned into a see-through in the wash and a pair of old gym shorts that had been bleached with stains on them. She looked around the den, squinting at the light, light that is emanating from the lamp on the nightstand. She then heard noises and sounds coming from outside, and she saw her mother's green bathrobe amongst the many other shifting silhouettes. Mom, she called, leaving the front door open, standing on the porch. Mom, what's happening? Her mother was wordlessly and emotioned her over. May came to her side and rubbing the sand from her eyes with one paw. Where's Dad? Is everything okay? May asked, now just realizing that the ambulance meant that someone had gotten hurt bad. May's mother put an arm around her, which didn't much too much to the Sade and the younger cat, but don't worry, she finally spoke. Your father is fine, hun. He's talking with the police. It's Mr. Penderson. May then looked over and saw the grouchy neighbor's front door stood wide open. Two paramedics, a crow and a gray wolf, a wheel gurney named throughout the opening, and the occupant completely covered by a tarp. He's dead? May exclaimed a little too loudly. The two paramedics looked at her briefly before exchanging sympathetic looks with another. They must have thought May and Mr. Pender Penderson were close. He was a very old man, hun. He probably passed on in his sleep, May's mother said, reassuring squeezing her shoulder. May didn't reply. She was busy remembering just yesterday when she passed by Mr. Penderson on her way back from the video outpost, too. She was too slowly ambling up on Main Street and completely paused and knit his wrinkled, scaly brow at her. You finally decided to pull your own weight, have you? The alligator wheezed. If that means I got a job, then yeah. What is it to you? May asked feminously. I know what you are, little miss. You're mighty lucky that this town gave you a second chance. If it were up to me... Yeah, whatever. You scold me for when even when I cured cancer, May said, cutting her neighbor off. She just wanted to go home and nap but not listen to the sour old coot and berate her. Hmm, was all the response that he, she ever got. As Mr. Penderson putted her past, although May had still heard a rumble and something around the youth today, she headed home and curled up in her blankets in even worse mood than she ever when she clocked out. She did not want to admit that she hoped that Penderson died whenever she was trying to fall asleep that night. It made her feel a little better. May, Candy, step back just a hair. May was then snapped out of her guilt and saw Aunt Molly pausing in front of her, unraveling the long yellow line of police tape. Molly, what are you doing? Her May's mother said. This isn't a crime scene. Mr. Penderson was almost 90. Just following orders, Molly said, having the tape tied to a fence before entering the house. May frowned and looked at her mother, who simply shook her head. When May's father is in an undershirt and furry red pajama bottoms, approached them, immediately put a hand on his daughter's shoulder. Are you all right, kitten? He asked. Yeah, I'm fine. Aunt Mall Cop then put a crime tape up, May replied. She did, didn't she? The family was quiet and went after that, watching Aunt Molly and the other police officers talk in the Mr. Penderson's sitting room. Molly eventually noticed them for the window, and she drew the curtains. We should probably get to bed, May's mother said shortly after closing the curtains were drawn. We have work tomorrow, and I'll talk to Molly about it in the morning. All three of them went inside, and at the base of the stairs, May's father turned to May, her mother pausing halfway up the stairs and looking down at them. Are you sure you're all right, May? You know that you and Mr. Penderson went by weren't a very definition of close, but... I'm okay, Dad, but thanks, though, May said, giving a half-hearted smile. The two of them then hugged, hugged them before heading upstairs to bed. May then stared out of the window for a while before turning away, the red and blue lights dancing on the hall, keeping her awake for as long as she could remember before she drifted off into a sleep. May then woke up before the alarm, the worst feeling of the world she hated but was irritating. The buzzy noise of the digital clock made her hated anticipating even more. 
She was happy to be working, but she wished that there was a way to wake up without the stupid alarm clock. She rolled over on the bed and rummaged her dresser in some clean clothes. After setting on some of her favorite orange t-shirts with crossed out zero and some baggy jeans, she then found her name tag. Hello, my name is May, in a pile of dirty clothes and trudged downstairs. She had Angus to thank for knitting her at the job at the video store and the deer had worked every night of the night shift that quit in April to pursue the modeling career. And Angus immediately approached his manager and told him about May. May helped her play with, play with her resume, and she was working from three to, three to nine days a week. Her mom and dad were still thrilled to, that she had managed to find a job. Even if it paid minimum wage, it was supremely boring. Still, money is money and work is work. Refreshing up and grabbing us fistful of Cheerios for breakfast. She went outside and the police tape from the previous night has sim have been flapped simply by the summer wind. She stared at it for a while with a yellow and black stripe warning not to cross. She thought about taking a look inside, but she could leave fingerprints and then could get in trouble with the cops all over again. Nevertheless, her curiosity was point that Mr. Penderson might have been a jerk, but she couldn't have think of any one reason to have want him dead. No one alive, anyhow. May went her way into town, passing by a newsstand, and that day's headline was something about the lumber of the day. The news reached to everyone's yet, apparently. Hey, Borowski. May they then felt an arm clapped in her purple sweater and wrapped around her scalp and playfully le 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 rubbed her set of hair in the knuckles. Ech, Smithers, quit it, May said, and a whine trying to help offending the hand away. What? Too busy to talk? You went past by my door. Silma and Forrester was better known to May than Slimmers, and she was May's longtime neighbor and her currently girlfriend. May had no idea where that the bear was into girls, and that she had been married to a man named Dennis for a while before he left Selena for another woman, and she never had made a mention of a romantic life after that. She shared a beer with her May on her 21st birthday, and then have a lightweight cat drunkenly and jokingly. Lee said that her loved her and she wanted to go out with her. Slimmers then took up on the deal. May, of course, didn't remember the next morning, but went along with the date anyway and find the two having a good time. Not just a good time, but a great time. Five months later, they were still tight like glue. So, no, I'm just thinking, May said, squirming out of Slimmers' grasp, only to fall right back with a brief hug. Did you ever hear what happened to Mr. Penderson died? Slimmer's and easygoing smile flattered a bit. Seriously? Oh crap. He's been in there since I was in diapers. Are you okay? Why does everyone keep asking me that? Yeah, I'm fine. I kind of hated his guts, May said, following Slimmer's right up front of her shop. Still, he's our neighbor, asshole or not, Slimmer said, plopping it down to her usual spot and then plop tucking her under her paws and jacket of her hoodie. May then sat beside her. It's weird, May said, but put up a police tape last night to keep people from going inside like a murder or crime scene or something. Could have been the reason to keep Pat Press out, or teenagers. I don't know. I saw him yesterday, and he was out walking. He seemed fine. He seemed like a nasty old crank, crank if you get that, said said um, said um, May, resting her chin on her paw. Who knows? Sometimes really old people just stop living. That's what happened to Nana when she was 93, and she was perfectly healthy, but she died in her sleep out of nowhere two years ago. Maybe, May said, resting her hand on head on top of Elma's shoulder. The bear was wrapped in the arm at her reply. You write any new poems? Nah, I've been reading out more of the poetry from the library, though. What you read? May asked. Howl in America by Ginsburg. Pretty good stuff. Too many stuff going on, though, Slimmer said with a faint smile. You can never go wrong with too many much books and reading, May said. This guy was always find a way to... To customize my and always find new and appropriate stuff, but every metaphor is really crazy. Maybe be he wrote those poems while he was naked. Well, he was gay too," said said Slimmer. Said, added, "So maybe he was just really crazy." Well, back in the fifties, being gay back then was like life ruining an accusation back then. Oh well, then good for him for not finding the love of well, you know what? May declare, holding a triumphal fist. That's not what love is. Being late for work, Slumber said with an eyebrow. Oh crap, I have to get to work, May whined. Can I see you after my shift? Not today. I got an interview at five and I'm babysitting, Slumber said. 
Text me though, and we'll make plans for the weekend. You're gonna nail it, the BD dubs. Get to work. To work, you dork. Slimmers chuckled and giving May a quick smooch on the lips before Hetty letting her head off. But of course, May couldn't really describe how charmed Slimmers possessed. Possessed. She had always been chill and easy to talk to, even though she was kind of close on in closing on Ferdy. She never would treat May like her kid. Thus, she never really, really treated her like felt like an adult. May also considered kind of spirit and was in, unemployed at a dropout. Even though May was no longer an empl- em, um, unemployed and Summers was going to get a job at the library, the interview was pretty much just a ceremony. Summers was guaranteed the job as she he loved the library and frequent passion for the number of Posasium and Springs Poetry Society. May unlocked the door to the video outpost too and she rarely saw Angus leave in the store, since she tend to have leave a little early for to make himself some lunch. And May was usually there for a minute or two before shift started at free. She flapped, flipped for the signs in the front door and opened and climbed into the step stool behind the register. As she was too short to see motherwise, May sighed and prepared to leave for the next evening of boredom. But her tears then perked up a bit when she remembered that she'd charged her phone. One of the perks that was working at the movie store was the Wi-Fi. Since Possum Springs had a terrible reception, she pulled out the phone when she got it for her birthday and checked the messages. Greg, on the other hand, had sent a photo while her, he and Bia were, were continuing their conversation through that the other night. She checked the Bia first. I'll look and see, but I doubt it, though. Maid asked if Bia, if she had Elliot's in the wasteland laying around her apartment. Since the Selmers really wanted to read it, the library didn't own a copy. May told her girlfriend that she could probably look it up on reading them on YouTube or just find a PDF of it. But Slammers declined, saying that she had learned the letter uh, better out of books. May then replied with a simple, thanks, bear, bear, bear. Of course, Greg then sat down, down and sent May, May into the candidate picture of Angus's butt with the caption that read, hashtag blessed. May then smirked and replied with more like second best, hashtag second best. Wait till I get one of my girl. But, of course, she wasn't quite comfortable speaking with Selmers about, about a shot of her butt yet, but one day that day will come. She then pressed her phone back in her pocket and rest her chin on her paw, and before taking the phone out again, sending a message to the group chat, B, Greg, Angus, and Germ. Hey, guys, Mr. Penderson totally died last night. She got an almost immediate reply from Germ. I saw him buy milk yesterday. I saw him too, May type. Wait. Is that the old nice old goat that lives next door to you? He asked. No, that's Mr. Twig Mayor. He's on vacation. Oh, we egged his house, Greg exclaimed. He was our neighbor, this like rip. Rip. <laughs> he never seemed to find when I last saw him, though, and they put up the police tape. I think they did that without every put when every person just dies for weeks unexpectedly, he said. May then typed out a message said, You don't think it's a. Uh, before shaking her head and erasing it, she decided to reply with, Yeah, I bet you're right. You have a cop in your family that would probably ask if it was a murder, Germ said as May started. The bird really had no filter. That's not how it works, Germ, B replied. Why not? My family tells each other secret stuff all the time. Mine doesn't, B said. Mine doesn't, Deaver, unless you have an aunt's small cop. She then could turn coal into diamonds. May then pointed out some of the messages with her butt. With her butt, of course, since she's, well, so hot. You could at least get the diamonds, Germ said for a moment. Give me and Angus some, Greg interjected. But I'm not sure how we would pay such a rejectable jewelry, Bay retorted. I could make a fortune. No one ever knows that they're butt diamonds, Mint May exclaimed. What if I stumbled out, Angus said, finally joined the conversation. I left some groceries when I came home to this. Of course, May's neighbor just died and she wants to make money off of her diamonds, Germ replied interestedly, and this was the far the fastest typer. Diamonds as in diamonds you wear? Like a text from Angus that followed a moment or two later. Wait, your neighbor is actually dead? Yep, Mr. Penderson took a dive, May said. Oh, that old racist guy? Can't say I'm heartbroken, Angus said. She did mean that diamonds came from her aunt. Mar Germ said. Ed Gross. Oh, so, oh, of course. Hey, Captain, do you remember to grab the angel hair? Hair Greg asked. Well, couldn't get a thing, Ham Panther said as he closed his eyes when I got there. Closed? 
Why? B inquired. Something happened there. The cops told me it was for my own safety. Your own safety? Greg typed. What the hell happened? They must have had bad milk, Germ said. What? B said. Germ was actually, what are you talking about? Greg asked as he chimed in the second half later. Penderson brought the milk and the pamphlet had died and died. And of course, the milk cops were at the house and now they were at the pamphlet. I don't get it, Greg typed. Well, Germ, I don't think Mr. Penderson was old and probably have been been dozen of health problems, B said. How do you know that he even bought milk from the ham pamphlet anyway? I saw him there last night. I went to buy some gamma, grandma, some new fish, fish oil pills, and I was behind him at the express line. He told me that he was dressed like a shoplifter, Germ explained. It's a stench, B said, but I'm sure somebody must have just broken in. The conversation turned to summer pals after plans after that, but May kept thinking about what Germ said. Sure, it was a long shot that the two crime scenes were connected, but even if they were, if it meant that Mr. Penderson ran into some especially rotten milk or some kind of foul play going on, later on it was that made May's stomach churn. The images and black cloaks and arms without foul the owners flashed through her mind. She thought about asking her father if she knew anything, but she probably wouldn't wait. Aunt Molly was usually short and her brother-in-law was still with May, so the chances of after reviewing any anything were so slim to none, and it didn't stop May from calling her dad to ask if he was alright. He was fine, and May wasn't surprised to hear that every in the morning, why did the store close earlier that afternoon, or why did the police were interviewing employees at one time? May had told him and that she had heard through the grapevine, and of course about the store closing, and said that she would look forward into seeing him tonight, not to mention about Milk or Mr. Penderson. At closing time, May was simply happy that the weekend had arrived, and the dark thoughts had been drowned out her excitement or the band practice. Hanging out with the gang and calling out for the summons arm, she forced herself around the humming song as she heard from one of the looping from the movie trailers of the video Outpost 2. She then found a stick and a hit of acorn corn with it, and she clacked her against the phone telephone pole. She then came to stop at her house, just at least a few places walked up to her front door. A tiny scrap of paper nearly folded up, and it was taped inside of Mr. Penderson's mailbox. It didn't look anything like the letter. It just looked as if she, if it had been in a flyer since it was identical bits of the paper taped on everyone else's mailbox. She let out the curiosity get the better of her, and she gingerly peeled the paper free from the metal. Within that box that looked like a clipping from the board, it contained a single paragraph that was highlighted in green. He saw that the rest of his days, frail, cracked, and racked and enduring. He would have lived in the place full of purifying terror, a fearful cry that is impossible to possess and escape. But holy ghost, embolished in ice instead of fire, continued impolitely to descend.